M0FXB, welcome to my channel and my videos on the ICOM ID52. M0FXB, let's just do a bit of live on the uh, ID52. So we'll go back, that was the, my all-star node coming through. It was still doing it when you first started your over. Uh, and when, when you sort of said, I can see it on, on my screen, I think you said it's about a quarter, of the, a quarter of the way. I'll just get a little bit further away. So when you did that, yes. So I've only got a couple of memory channels in. That's GB3WRUK. Uh, although this is a J Japan model import, it still speaks with an English accent because there's a, a setting in the menu where you can do that. You just go menu, set, and then you just go down to, pretty sure it's speech, and look, speech language, you've got English and Japanese menu to get you back and then look even when we're on fm analog you still get a gps showing up here and we have got a lock as you can see at the top these wow. are these are all japanese memories now if we want to go into dr mode we just hold this down we've gone into dr mode now this radio has got two dr modes it's like two d star radios in one there's my hotspot now. Sometimes in the morning I have to reboot. So look, nothing coming there at all. So I'll reboot that in a sec. Just give me a minute. Right, that's plugged in. So we just get it into dual mode by holding down the main button. And we should hear it come to life. And just while it's doing that, I'll show you how you can change the screen from black to white. Menu, go to set, and let's go to display, uh, background color, and look, white, which I quite like the white. Uh, it looks a bit washed out now, but it does work well, especially in the sunlight. We'll go menu. Link to RPF zero zero. Charlie. There you go, straight away, my hotspot's on, and you heard one Charlie announced there. Now we've got a little arrow, it's like GPS arrow here as well showing. So let's wait for someone. My open spot here, which is on the B band, was on 30 Charlie. I'll just show you the GPS. So go menu. This is a, I call it a quick button. You've got an FM radio, but. We'll turn that off. So quick button. Let's go to GPS info. There you go. There's the satellites. Nice cup of tea here in the UK. Um, menu. And just I think to go back, you just push that. Yeah. So menu. GPS. And there's my position. And you, you can put it into memory, so I need to change that because it's not accurate. Okay, so no activity on D-Star there. And if you want single receive, you just hold down the button again. There you go, that's single receive. And if we go into normal mode, hold down the DR, and we'll do it at the bottom on the, on the other band as well, the A. We'll go to dual. That's what it looks like in normal memory mode, and then VFO, B band, VFO. Look, that's the sort of VFO that you would get. And then mode, you've got a mode button here, and at the top here it changes. FM, you know, narrow. Hear that? DB. FM. FM. You know, FM, A and B band. DB. It's full duplex. Memory, you've got a whole memory section. You've got, I haven't really used the scan section yet. FM. Let's hold it down. Let's do all. And look, it's, it's now scanning. Turn the channel container backwards, controller backwards, it scans that way. 
and forward and I'm sure when it finds something it will stop. Hold down for scan again. And you've got these, I need to do a menu just on the scanning side, sorry a video on the scanning side. But you can see how you can choose, look, you can go to that section there, that was two metre section. That will be a link. Volume is the lower button, lower round button, and you can have it separate or you can have it all. You don't have to control both VFOs simultaneously. And that's just in the menu. Just go menu. It's come out. Of, I've locked it now. So let's just come out of lock. Just holding down the menu bar. So we go menu set and then we'll go to sounds volume select all fm radio separate all separate so we're on all at the moment i mean it's packed full of functions so let's just go back into my memories and go back to all star the speaker on this is louder than the 51 i would say now i've got more used to it I quite like the new icon one. Um, the price is too dear. What's about 300 quid? It's uh, my connection. Yeah, there's Jewel Receive. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, D-Star. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. That, one's out. that station sounds a bit muffled. Well, yeah, this one's okay. Yeah, so obviously you've got the LED here on the side, PTT, squelch and on off. Now you have to be a bit patient with the on off because it's like a computer booting up. You have to hold it, it takes a while, I have to get my thumb, sort of my, the smaller part of my thumb in there. Sure enough, I was waiting to see if Mike was going to come in. Then here, I haven't used the DC input, but there you are. And I have noticed that when you connect the USB charger, it does charge, but also you have an option to use it as a serial or data. And then Mike. Both of you, and I'm happy to listen for a little while. There you go. So, speaker and mic. And the battery is just an ID51 battery, and I've bought the BP307, but this is the BP271, this one. And I've got a few of these lying around now. So this one is 1800 milliamps, which I'd say is probably the one that's recommended for the radio. It's the medium sort of size. I've noticed this grommet here, so I'm wondering what is under it. But like this, this is the Japan model. It just says ID52. It does no E. But it looks like their band allocation is very similar to the UK. Battery backing. Yeah, I've got the belt clip. And yeah, you can boot load a boot up picture, which I've done. And I've told it on boot up to, to ask me which battery I'm using. And the 705 does this as well. So at the moment it's a 272, so I'll select that and it gives you the battery. Then obviously we need to wait for the lock. Now there is an SD card in this radio, which I've used to upgrade the firmware. There's your SD card. Wow, that's weird. Okay, I might have to shut down my other door. Let's just turn it down. Um, Firmware-wise you just go menu. Once you've got the firmware on the file, go set. Go down to SD card. Yeah, there's your opening picture. Importing CSV files. Load and save settings. I'll save a setting now. We'll save that setting. It's very similar to using 705. I suppose the 51 as well. So that'll all be saved. And it does it for you automatically when you're doing firmware as well. Right, uh, firmware, there's firmware, you get the usual warning. Now what you need to do is, before you do anything like that, you need to 
format the SD card in your computer, then put it in the radio, format it, and then I would save one setting. So then all the files are ready for firmware. And also make sure your battery, before you do anything firmware, make sure you've got a full battery. Um, get your 51 on charge. Look, you've got a lock now for GPS showing at the top. Memory wise, if you want to store something in the memory, say if you're in VFO, we're in VFO there. You just hold down the MR button and it gives you a couple of options. You can, you know, the, the obvious one is right to a new channel. And if you hold, if you just select that, it, it takes you straight away to a group. Now you can change groups. I think it's by clicking quick here. Yeah, look, group select. I'll, I'll stay, I, I created a group called My Channels and renamed it. So now you push the middle button again, and then you write it to a blank channel, and that's written it to, I think, 72. And, but it, then it takes you back to VFO mode, so you have to hit Memory mode, and go to 72, and that's that's probably the one we just changed, I would say. And you can tag it as well. When you tag it, you have to go back into Memory mode, which we're in, then you can hold it, and you can edit the name, see, and then you click quit. So you can put the name in. You can use the uh, the top knob to select characters, as you can see. And then enter, and then put enter again, and then it's overwrite. There you go. Then you've got memory and VFO. So that's it, really. So overall, it's just a fantastic radio. You know, it's dual. DR receive and to me that is the best thing of this radio is that I do like the color screen the way it reminds me of the ICOM 705 I haven't really touched my 705 since I've had this so that says a lot because I'm enjoying using the 705 experience in my hand and I can just walk around I definitely always make sure I've got my strap in my hat on I don't want to drop it. We've got no leather case, but you know, the leather case hides how nice looking this radio is. I think ICOM have done an excellent job with this radio. I can't, I haven't found anything about it I don't like. And, and uh, I think that, yeah, the price is, is you know, £500 is a lot of money for a handheld, a lot of money. Uh, but you've got something that really you'll keep for it, I would say, for at least five years before they decide to start changing it. And um, I think it's worth it. So, um, 7-3, thanks for watching. Just got this little rubber duck, just if anyone asks, I got from eBay. Maybe like £3, just easier. Big long antenna can be a bit, you know, but it's not a good one for, if I want to go out and get some really good contacts, then I wouldn't be using that. This is for home use only. And, um, yeah, you definitely need a spare battery. And just the, the the front keys, as far as I can see, I think they illuminate. They're definitely the middle one does. Pretty sure they do they do illuminate. I should know the answer to that, shouldn't I? I think they do. So seven three, all the best. Thanks very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you find it helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe. Seven three, all the best.